An Introduction to the Science of Hadith by Ibn Salah al Shahrazuri, 577 to 643, the most influential work on the science of hadith in existence. Category 39, the companions, God be pleased with all of them. Ma'rifat as Sahaba. This is a vast science on which people have written many books. If it had not been for Ibn Abdul Bar's disgraceful inclusion of a large amount of material concerning the disputes that flared up between the companions and his relations from the secular historians, Akhbariyin, rather than the transmitters of hadith, in his Kitab al Isti'ab fi Ma'rifat al Ashab, the comprehensive book of companions, uh, it would have been one of the most pleasant and useful works on the subject. Prolixity and confusion prevail in what the secular historians relate. I will present here some useful points, God he is exalted willing, which the authors of the books of the companions should have at the outset turned their attention to in the introduction to their books. Number one, scholars disagree over what constitutes a companion Sahabi. The well-known practice of the adherents of Hadith is to regard every Muslim who saw the Messenger of God as a companion. Bukhari said in his Sahih, every Muslim who associates with Sahab, uh, who associated with Sahiba, Sahiba, the Prophet peace be upon him, or saw him in his is one of his companions. We read that Abu Muzaffar Sam'ani al Marwazi said, The scholars of Hadith apply the term companion without qualification to all of those who related from the Prophet a Hadith or even a single word, and they allow so much latitude in this that they count even a single word, and they allow a single word of a companion as anyone who saw the Prophet even just once. It is on account of the nobility of the status of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that they grant companionship to all of those who saw him. He said that the term companion from the standpoint of common parlance and literal sense applies only to those who associated with the Prophet, peace be upon him, for an extended length of time, studied extensively under him as a follower of his, and took many hadith from him. This is the doctrine of the experts in legal theory. Indeed, we heard that Sa'id ibn Musayyib did not regard as a companion anyone who had not stayed with the Messenger of God, peace be upon him, for at least a year or two and fought with him on one or two campaigns. It seems that the meaning of this, if it is related correctly from him, refers to what is related from the legal theorists. However, there is some difficulty in his choice of expression because it necessitates that we not regard as a companion Jarir ibn Abdullah al-Bajali. Apologies, no Arabic given. And others like him who fall short of fulfilling the letter of what he stipulated, including those whose inclusion among the companions has never, to our knowledge, been challenged. We have heard from Shu'ba that Musa as Sabalani, and he was highly spoken of, said, I went to Anas ibn Malik and said, Are there any companions of the Messenger of God, peace be upon him, beside you still alive? He said, Some Bedouins who saw him are still alive. As for those who associated with him, no. The isnad of the report is good, and Muslim related it in the presence of Abu Zur'a al-Razi. In some cases, an individual is known to be a companion by means of universal acknowledgement, bit-tawatur, in some cases of numerous testimonies, bit-istifada, falling short of universal acknowledgement, in some cases by a few of the companions relating that he is a companion, and in some cases by his own statement or report after his integrity is established that he was a companion. God knows best. Number two, the companions. The companions, all of them, possess the special trait that the integrity of none of them may be questioned. Rather, it is a settled matter because of their being declared upright without qualification in texts from the Quran, the Sunnah, and by consensus of those who are taken into consideration in the consensus of the community. God is blessed and exalted, said, You were the best community which is brought forth for men, and so forth. It is said that the commentators agree that this verse refers to the companions of the Messenger of God, peace be upon him. God, he is exalted, said, Thus we made you a community in the middle, so that you can be witnesses against the people. And this speech addressed to those living at that time. He, I praise him, also said, Muhammad, the Messenger of God, peace be upon him, and those who are with him are severe against the infidels, and so forth. Many of the texts of the Sunnah also testify to that, including the hadith of Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, which is agreed to be sound, that the Messenger of God, peace be upon him, said, do not insult my companions by the one who holds my life in his hand. If one of you to spend a pile of gold the size of Uhud on good works, he would still not attain a small measure of honor of one of the companions or even half of that measure. 
The community agrees unanimously on declaring all of the companions to be upright on the basis of the consensus of those scholars who are taken into account in determining a consensus. The same is held to be true for those who are involved in the discord fitan on account of their high esteem and the glorious deeds which were set out for them. It would seem that God, he is praised, ordained the consensus on that because they were the conveyors of the holy law, the Sharia, and God knows best. Number three, the most prolific companion, the most prolific companions in terms of transmitting hadith from the messenger of God, peace be upon him, was Abu Huraira. That judgment was related from Sa'id ibn Abi, Abi hassan and Ahmed ibn Hanbal, and it is an obvious fact not hidden from any hadithologist. He was the first scholar of hadith, sahib al-hadith. We read that Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dawood the Sijistani said, I saw Abu Hurairah in a dream while I was in Sijistan arranging his hadith. I said, I love you. He said, I was the first scholar of hadith in the world. We also heard that Ahmed ibn Hanbal, God be pleased with him, said, six of the companions of the Prophet related much from him, and they were granted a long life. Abu Hurairah ibn Umar, Aisha, Jabir ibn Abdullah, ibn Abbas, and Anas. Abu Hurairah was the most prolific of them in terms of hadith and reliable transmitters took from them. The most prolific of the companions in terms of legal responsa, Futia, uh, related from him is Ibn Abbas. We read that Ahmed ibn Hanbal said, none of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, has more legal opinions related from him than Ibn Abbas. We also heard that Ahmed ibn Hanbal was asked, who are the Abdullahs? And he replied, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Abdullah ibn Amr. He was asked, and Ibn Mas'ud? He said, no, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is not one of the Abdullahs. The, the expert, Ahmed al-Bayhaqi, in something that we heard from him and I read in his own writing, and I read in his own writing, said, that is because Ibn Mas'ud died early. Those others lived until their knowledge was needed. When they agree on something, it is said it is the doctrine of the Abdullahs, or this is what they did. Ibn Mas'ud shared his status with the rest of the companions named Abdullah, and they net numbered 220. God knows best. We heard... Ali ibn Abdullah al-Madini say, uh, al say, only three of the companions of the prophets had students who took up their doctrine in law. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Zayd ibn Thabit, ibn Abbas, God be pleased with them. Each of them had students who took up his doctrine and gave legal opinions to the people. We heard that Masruq said, I found that the knowledge of the companions of the prophet, peace be upon him, uh, ended in the hands of six of them. Umar, Ali, Ubay, Zayd, Abu Darda, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. The knowledge of these six went to two, Ali and Abdullah. We heard something similar from Mutarrif, from Sha'abi, from Masruq, and he mentioned Abu Mus'ab instead of Abu Darda. We heard that Sha'abi said, knowledge was taken from six of the companions of the Messenger of God, peace be upon him. Umar, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Zayd was similar in knowledge, and they used to borrow from one another. The knowledge of Ali, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, and Ubay was similar and used to borrow from one another. We heard that the expert Ahmed al-Bayhaqi said that Shafi'i mentioned the companions in the original version of his treatise. Risalatihi al Qadima praised them appropriately and then said, They are above us in every branch of knowledge, in personal striving, ijtihad, in piety, in intelligence, and in any matter through which knowledge is attained and derived. To us, their legal opinions are the most praiseworthy, and theirs are better for us than the ones we have for ourselves. And God knows best. Stay tuned. <laughs>